Welcome back. In the previous three videos, I talked about how to do the optimization problems or how to solve the optimization problems um, in general using the Lagrangian. Now, if you understood the content of these three videos, you will have no problem in following what I'm going to do here uh, to find the W and the B. <coughs> now, the previous optimization problem that we ended up with for SVM was this problem, so we wanted to minimize, we wanted rather to maximize the width, so this is the expression of the width of the uh, margin, or the margin, we wanted to maximize the margin, and we found that the expression of this margin was, you know, d was equal to 2 divided by w squared or rather just 2 divided by w and we want to maximize this expression for w and b and we had a constraint the constraint was that yi or y sub i multiplied by w dotted with xi plus b uh, this sh thing should be higher or equal than you know 1 but now what I will do is to bring the 1 to this side and I will have the following constraint so this is the constraint subject <coughs> now uh, to make the math a little bit more convenient what we need to do instead of maximizing this expression so this is the same thing as minimizing the same thing as minimizing um, for one or rather it's the same thing as maximizing for one by w which is the same thing as minimizing for w and again to make the, ma the math easier this is the same thing as minimizing one half w squared right and this w squared this thing here is equal so this is equal this is equal to w dotted with w and it's also equal to w uh, multiplied by the transpose of w so it's the same thing so the minimization problem we want is this one we want to minimize or the optimization problem is that we want to minimize this thing here, we want to minimize this expression for w and b subject to this constraint here. So this is my optimization problem. And to solve that optimization problem, what I will do is that first I will create a primal of Lagrangian, an equation for a primal of Lagrangian, which is, we refer to this primal as LP, which is a function of W and B <coughs> and alpha i, okay? And by this expression, using this expression, we will find the expression of W, so this would give us the expression of W that solves the optimization problem. Okay? And then, after getting that W, what I will do is that I will create another Lagrangian, which is the dual Lagrangian, the dual Lagrangian that we refer to as LD, which is a function of alpha i. And then what I will do is that I will try to minimize that expression, or rather maximize that expression for alpha i. In the alpha i, I will get by maximizing this expression would be replaced in the expression of w and then I get my final w because the expression of w that I will get here will depend upon alpha i okay so now this is how I get w and alpha i so w I can obtain it from initially from 
this expression by taking the partial derivative of this expression with respect to w, I get an expression of w that depends upon alpha i. Okay? And to get the alpha i, I will use the dual and I will try to maximize the dual. What is the alpha i that would maximize the dual? And then when I get that alpha, I will replace it in the expression of w that I would have gotten by this formula here. This should be equal to zero. And in this way, we'd have alpha i and w. Now, finally, to finish the optimization problem, I need to get b. Okay, I need to get this term here, b, rather this term, b, the bias. And the term b would be easily obtained by using the, uh, the value of w. So this is uh, something that we'll talk about later. But for now, let's focus on building the primal expression of the Lagrangian. Okay? So, what I will do now is just, I will uh, try to do what I just explained. So, I will go through all the steps that I just mentioned. So, let's start by building a Lagrangian. So, this is my Lagrangian, primal Lagrangian, LP, that depends upon W and B and alpha i. So this Lagrangian, as, as explained in the previous video, is equal to the thing that I want to minimize. What I want to minimize? I want to minimize this expression here. So I should put my expression that I want to minimize here. And then I subtract the summation of alpha i multiplied by the constraint. Well, what is my constraint? This is my constraint. So I put this constraint here. And I have, of course, uh, n constraints, or rather m constraints, and m is equal to the number of samples. Okay, so this should be multiplied by yi and this in turn is multiplied by w xi plus b minus 1 and this starts from i equal to 1 to m such that m this is the number of training samples in other words, the number of constraints is the same as the number of training samples. Now, let's find the expression of W. The expression of W can, normally to solve this uh, minimization problem, I can just take the derivative of, uh, you know, of, of this expression here with respect to W and make it equal to zero. And again, the expression of, let me write this down just to be clear, I need to compute the expression or the partial derivative of this with respect to w and make it equal to zero. And again, the partial derivative of this and with respect to b equal to zero. And again, the partial derivative of this with respect to alpha i or alpha sub i, make it equal to zero. So I get a system of three equations and this Solving these equations will give me w and b in alpha i. But we will not use this method. We will use the method that I previously described by using the dual of the Lagrangian because it's easier, it's mathematically convenient, and it has another advantage, uh, which is uh, that it, allow, it allows us to do or to perform the kernel trick. What is the kernel trick? This is something that I will talk about later. Okay? So now instead of taking this partial derivative, the three partial derivatives, I will just take the partial derivative with respect to w and b, and I will not take the partial derivative with respect to alpha i. Okay? So the partial derivative, before taking the partial derivative, I need you know to simplify a little bit this uh, uh, this equation. I need to make you know distribute all the terms so the derivative will be easier to perform. So now this expression of the Lagrangian is equal to one half 
w dotted with w minus the summation of alpha i y i w x i alpha i y i w x i minus again alpha i y i and b alpha i y i and b minus so this thing here by multiplied by this term so the minus with minus becomes a plus so this should be a plus alpha i such that i starts from 1 to n now i can easily make my you know my uh, partial derivative this is the a simpler or a more convenient expression of the primal to do our derivatives now the partial derivative of this with respect to w is equal so this is equal to uh, w yeah it's w and this thing here is equal to minus so I just remove this term w I will get alpha i y i x i these two terms are independent of w therefore they are both zero okay so minus zero plus zero and when I make this equal to zero I get this expression for w that you know minimizes this primal so this is the expression of w that minimizes my problem or that solves my problem this is starts from 1 to m of alpha i y i x i and this is my expression and if, if you if you see here what I need to get the W is the alpha I and I still don't have the alpha I and as I told you the alpha I will be obtained from the dual expression so I will talk about that in a moment but for now let me do the derivative of this with respect to B the partial derivative of primal with respect to B this is equal to what? The first does not depend upon b. So this is 0 minus there is nothing for b here. This is 0. This is 0. And this is equal to alpha i y i. i equal to 1 to m. And when I make this equal to 0, I can conclude that the summation of alpha i y i I starts from 1 to m this thing here is equal to 0 okay so now if I replace this expression in this expression into this expression I get the dual expression of the Lagrangian in other words what I do in general is that I find the partial derivative of the primal with respect to all the variables that I want to minimize for. What are the variables I want to minimize for? These variables are w and b. Okay, this is what I want to minimize my problem for. Remember, that's my original problem. And what I need to find is w and b. Right? So what I do is that I do the partial derivative with respect to these variables, but not for the Lagrangian coefficient. Okay, so I hope this is clear. And if if you don't get this idea, please go back to the previous <coughs> to the previous video well, where I explained that clearly. So now let me finish my uh, the math that I'm doing here. So if I replace this thing and this thing in this equation, I will get the dual. So the dual, the expression for the dual, and this expression of course should be a function of alpha alpha i so this would be one half um, I replace here the w so the first w is you know the alpha i y i x i and this should be multiplied or dotted with another w okay so in other words what I need to do here is to change the indexes so this is the first W, and the second W is this, alpha j, yj, xj. 
and of course i starts from uh, 1 to n and i here starts also from 1 to n and this thing here this term is inside this summation here so what we do here i think that you are confused why i i've introduced another index so this is g so what we do here is that for a given index i for example say that i equal to 3 what we do is that we compute alpha 3 y uh, y3 and x3 this thing here should be multiplied by the summation of alpha 1 y1 x1 plus alpha 2 y2 x2 plus and i keep doing that until i reach n and then for i equal 4 i do the same thing and so on and this is the reason why i introduced here another index which is g i hope that is something that is clear for you now now i will complete the math i'm doing so i have here minus alpha i y i x i and this is again multiplied by the w and this should have another index for w so i will use another index this is alpha j y j x j and this j starts from 1 to m and this j here this i here starts from 1 to m okay now this thing here is equal to zero because the b is a constant i can move the b here out of this summation so i have b multiplies let me just delete this b it's a b can be here can be moved here so b multiplied by this term here and if you see this term is equal to zero so this entire term is equal to zero so i don't care about this term so this is minus zero and then i have plus summation of alpha i that i starts from one and finishes at m now i can write this in a more convenient way so I, what i want to do is you know to, just to bring these summations here and uh, continue the math that I'm doing so this can be written again as one half summation two summation one summation for I and another summation for J so I can say that this is alpha I alpha J Y I Y J X I dotted with X J so this is a vector just in case you've forgotten about this okay so I did nothing here I just brought this summation here and this is the you know the, the parameters they have this is minus again two summations i and g one for i and one for g so you have here again alpha i alpha j x i dotted with x j and y i multiplied with by y j okay and this plus summation of alpha i now this term here is equal to this term and I have one half this term minus this term so I have one half a this is a this is the term a minus a plus summation of alpha i so this is just minus one half a okay and a is just this term right over here in other words the final dual this is the final dual the expression of the dual alpha i is equal to one half or rather um, summation of alpha i let's start with positive things minus one half the two summations for i and j alpha i alpha j y i y j x i x j this is a dot product of course 